Hi, Ami. How are you doing? Hi, sir. Yeah, I'm really good. Thank you. How are you? Very good. Very good. So today, what do you want to do? Um, I was just thinking that, um, you know, like trying to revise, I guess the best way you always say is to, to do exam questions. So I was thinking if we could just do like um, a couple from like various topics just to get um, an understanding. Because when you know the topic and then you do exam questions from it, it's easy because it's like you're already in the mindset. When you suddenly get like into so many different topics, it can be quite hard to remember even like the easiest of formulas when we do in like in class together. So I thought that would be quite helpful. Yeah, it's a great suggestion. So let's see how do we solve a test paper. So pick up some test paper and share with me. We'll solve it and you know do our best. Yeah, do our best. <laughs> okay. Uh, so can you see my screen? Yes, I do. So let me. Okay. Let me These are all a bit random, so. Um, Okay, so that's good. It's like exam, true exam. <clears throat> all the questions are randomly coming, right? Right. And most yeah. of the topics are covered for you. So that's a good thing. Okay, so let us um, actually read the though, um, I haven't done like year 13, obviously content, um, but in this exam question, if, I, if there are questions that we can't answer, maybe I actually haven't done it. So um, yeah, okay. I don't know. It's not easily split. <laughs> that's true. So let me write year 12. And 13, correct? Slash 13, yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's read the question. Let's try to see how do we solve it. Okay, so um, 7i, use logarithms to solve the equation eight to the power of two x plus one, which equals 24, giving your answer to three decimal places. Correct. So take logs on both sides. Correct, so basically you, you're right. So take logs on both sides, you could do that part, correct? Um, because it is saying three decimal places. Right, so there is a, mm. that is the best way to do it. So yes, so take logs on both sides. So when you do, let me rewrite this equation with logs. We say log of eight to the power eight. of two x plus one equals to log of twenty four. Right? Yeah. So using the properties of log, two x plus one can be written like this. Right? That is the power. It comes here. Log rules. Power rule. And we have log eight yeah equals to log 24. Uh, that means 2x plus 1 is equal to log of 24 divided, divided by, by log of 8. Since you have to use the calculator, you need not do 24 minus 8 and simplify. No need, right? So you'll just yeah. write an expression. Take one that side, we get log of 24 over log of eight minus one. And clearly X is half of all this, right? Yeah. So log of 24 divided by log of eight minus one. And you can use your calculator to solve this. Perfect. Yeah, so I've got just for reference 0 0.264. To 3 to DP. 0. 0.264. Okay. So we'll assume that to be the right answer. You can always check. So now do 8 to the power of 2 times 0. 0.264 plus 1. What, what do you get? So just check, right? So we get two, 8 to the oh power yeah. 2 times 0. 0.264 plus 1, right? So 1.528. 8 to the power of 1.528. 23.98. 9. So this gives you 23. 0.98, which matches with your 24, and therefore right. that's the right solution. Is that oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, that was really important to check back to see if it's right. Mm -hmm. I know, I know it's an easy, like it's an obvious thing, but like right now when we're doing an exam, I just thought the answer and then I moved on. It's good to get in the habit to put it back because I would have time to like go back and check. So if I check now, at least I know when I move on, I'm like sure that's right. It takes one second. Point. It takes one second yeah. and gives you confirmation for three points. Is that okay? Yes. Very yes. important, right? Next question, please. Oh, so just a, another quick question. With that logs one, uh, do you ever have to take like the same um, like base uh, with logs? You know, like yeah, yeah. Um, two so if, or like if they are not at the same base, we may have to change the base of logs. In this oh, example, all yes, 
In this okay. example, all are to the base two. So that should be simple. So you'll okay. apply log rules, right? And solve this particular question. So uh, can you, uh, okay. The question here is find the value of y such that log to the base two of 11 y minus three minus log to the base two of three minus two times log to the base two of y equals to one. And we are given that y value is greater than three over 11, okay? Yeah. So basically all are to the log, so you can use the logarithmic rules, you can log to the base two of, whenever it is minus, it means division, right? So you get yes, 11 yeah. y minus three divided yeah. by log of the base two to the base three, and then we have also minus two. So this means y is square, right? Yeah, because the two was brought down, yeah. Very. So, so that means y square equals to one, correct? So you may rewrite here one, one step, uh, writing uh, this power to that point, right? y square, and then, oh. then do it. Is it clear to you? Yes, yeah. And now, uh, a log of one, uh, that is one. And when will this be one? Um, when that whole thing equals two? Zero. Oh, zero. Well, then it can be one. So oh, this whole oh, yeah. thing has to be zero, right? So we have 11 y minus three over three times y squared. That should be equal to zero. Is it okay? Because we know Wait, that, sir. yeah. But what happened, you know, if like when I in my calculator, when I did log two and then in brackets two, oh, I sorry, it should be it should be two, right? Sorry, sorry. Oh, okay. Because anything. Wait, so when is it zero? zero? Anything when it's one. Of, oh. Anything to the power of zero is one, right? Yeah, yeah. Anything to the power of zero is one. And therefore, all this should be you need one. Two. All this should be two, right? Right, right. So if you look into the log graph, yeah, I, I wanted to say two to the power of zero and you know, messed up. Okay, anyway. So basically <coughs> log graph is kind of like this, right? And you're looking for this particular value when it is one. Okay. Yeah. So if you're looking for two to the uh, log to the base two, right? X base is two. So when you get it has to be x is greater than zero. Is that clear to you? Yeah. X is greater. So when it is two to the power of one, it gives you two, right? Yeah. Since you want this to be one, that basically means x equals to two to the power of one. That means x equals to two. Is that clear to you? Yeah. Log to the base two of x is one. So. So we have to equate all this to two. So we get a quadratic equation. So we can solve this quadratic equation. So we now have, let me change the ink. We have 11 y minus three equals to two times three is six y squared. So we can rewrite this as six y squared minus 11 y plus three equals to zero. Now we can factor this. Six times three is 18, right? So nine yeah. and two. We get 6y squared minus 9y minus 2y plus 3 equals to 0. You can factor this. You get 3 common, 3y common, right? So we get y minus 3, 2y, 2y minus 3. And take minus common, you get 2y minus 3 equals to 0. So 2y yeah. minus 3 is now common. And you get 3y minus 1 equals yeah. 0. So that gives you two values. One is y equals to three over two, right? And a third. Y is zero two and y equals to one third. You're also given the restriction that y is greater than three over 11, correct? Yeah. So, so is it if oh. I do three, three times, so I get three over nine, correct? Is that clear? Wait, um, oh yeah, when you times a third by a three. Yeah. yeah. Three over nine, correct? So three over nine is greater than three over 11. So this is also a right answer, correct? And three yeah. over two is definitely the right answer because it's 1 .5. It's more than 1.4. 1. Is that okay? Oh, right. So we yes. have two solutions for this and they are three by two 
and 1 by 3. Is that correct? So we have two yes. solutions for this particular case. Okay. If so yeah. If you're not very sure, you can check the calculator because calculator is allowed for this. Uh, what is the decimal value, right? Oh, yeah. 1 yeah. over 3, you know, point. 0 0.3. 333 3, 3, 3, and yeah. Okay. Now we're done these two. Is it absolutely clear to you? Yeah. So, so can I just like highlight the key Summarize. stuff that yeah. I learned? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So um, in the part one, um, what we did was, uh, so we're looking at this, it says use logarithms. So you have to like, just take logs on both sides, use the logarithmic rules, move it around and you get your value. But the key thing that I didn't do, but now will do, is after you find your value, you want to try and just sub in. It takes a second to do it. And when we did it, we found that the value was basically 24. So you really want to do that just to double check. Because it's nice to move on, like feeling confident that that's the right answer. Perfect. And then for part two, we just, um, so it looks all complicated, but it's all about just knowing those log rules. Because when you see the minus, you know that we're talking about dividing and then knowing log two. And then the base of two then to uh, two equals one is really important. Just to solve the equation, you get a simple quadratic and then factorize. Perfect. And then make sure those two values are satisfy your domain. Within. That is yeah. very important. Good job. So you can hear another question now. I think it's probably a different, yeah, different topic. Okay, good, good. Yeah, let's do this. So can you please read the question? Yes, sir. So um, solve for uh, theta where it's in between um, pi, zero sorry, pi. zero and pi, yes, uh, with zero included. Um, sine three theta minus root three cos three theta is zero, giving your answer in terms of pi. Perfect. So this is a very simple question. We'll take cos theta to the other side. So we get what? So we get sine three theta equals to square root three cos three theta, correct? Yeah. Now we'll divide both sides by cos three theta. So we get and tan yeah. three theta. So, so we get tan three theta equals square root of three. Root three. You know the special triangle? As soon as you see root 3, you should look into the special triangle. Is it OK? Oh, OK. OK. Now, in special triangle, this is 60 degrees, but they want a radians, which is pi by 3, right? Yeah. In that case, the sides are 1, 2, and square root of 3, correct? So tan of pi by 3 is square root of 3. Is that clear to you? <coughs> yes. Yeah. So. Square root of 3 means basically 10 of pi by 3. Is it OK? So that means 3 theta equals to pi by 3. And theta will be equals to pi by 9. Is that clear to you? Now, uh, yeah. Any oh, wait. Question? Sorry. Yes, I did actually lose you for a second. Okay. So wait, so yeah, Internet. could you just repeat that, please? Yes. Tan 3 theta is square root 3, as you can see from the special triangle, right? So tan theta is the ratio of opposite over adjacent. over adjacent, right? So which is square root 3 or pi by 3. So instead of square root 3, I wrote pi by 3. Tan of 3 theta, therefore, is equal to pi by 3. Solve for theta, pi by 9, OK? Now, but instead why instead of root 3 did you write pi over 3? Because Tan pi by 3 is root 3, right? Correct? Oh, that was so, whoa, a mind blown. Mm -hmm. I didn't, that was, yeah, I did not see that. <laughs> but like I've want, never in a million years have done that. Okay, you want pi between 0 to this and the Question says three theta, right? Do you see that? Yeah. So we are saying that theta is between zero to pi. So if I divide this by three, everyone, right? So what do we get? We get that we are looking for theta. Oh, sorry, I have to multiply by three. I'm sorry. Three theta, right? Three pi. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry, not divides. I think because it was pi over three, you thought <laughs> divide yeah, three. Yeah, yeah. I was looking into the solution, right? What yeah. we got. Anyway, let me just redo this, right? 
Hans Kent. Okay, so zero less than equals to three theta, three pi, right? Do you see that three pi? Yeah. So that means three theta could be between three pi. Now three pi right. really will give you another solution. So that's kind of important to understand. So when you have the cast rule, so three pi means what for you? So it is one pi, then another pi and another pi. Do you see that? Yeah. So there are more solutions than what we have just given. Oh, so that's when you need to add um, the 180. Add the cycle of tan theta, which is pi. You get the idea? Oh, pi, so yeah. Sorry, in degrees. Yeah. So, so basically, you get 3 theta equals to 1, of course, we got pi by 3, right? So that is one answer. So let me show it here, pi by 3, correct? Yeah. Then we will add pi, pi. to it. So we have another answer, which is going to be this, correct? Yeah. So then we have pi by 3 plus pi, correct? Then we'll again add pi to it and come back to this place. Right. So. So, but because, you know, 1 pi, 2 pi, and 3 pi, right? So we could go one more time, right? So then we'll add pi by 3 plus 2 pi, right? Do you see that? Yeah. So calculate these values. Are they uh, less than 3 pi? They Wait. are. I need to be in radians, yeah? OK. Yeah, when you write pi, it is radians. <coughs> So, right. so pi by 3 is the first answer. Then you add pi to pi by 3. That means 3 pi plus 1 pi, 4 pi by 3. Sorry. 4 pi by 3, right? This, these are the value 3 theta, okay? And then you're adding 2 pi to it. 3 times 2 is 6, 7 pi. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah. And therefore, you're going to divide each by 3, and you'll get the other answers, which will be? 4 pi by 9 and 7 pi by 9. Now you should check. 7 pi by 9 is less than pi, correct? Yeah. So these are oh, three so solutions. They're in the domain, yeah. There are three solutions for this particular question. So it is not that it was easy calculation to begin with, but yeah. now to see how many solutions are there in the given domain because we right. have two theta, not one theta. 3 theta, right? Yeah. Theta it's kind of like this, thing like this. So we expected three solutions in the domain 0 to pi. Is that clear to you? I see. Yeah, yeah. So the moment we see, um, so let's say, because in they've given us the domain as theta, if they put like 4 theta, 5 theta, you should be, even before you answer, you should know that there should be so many, like at least a lot of solutions. Got it. Because you're going around so many times. And keep on adding. So if I, now on this, add another pi to it because the period for tan is pi, correct? Right. So if I add another pi to it, 2 pi plus pi is 3 pi. So I know I'm going away from my domain, right? So yes, we, yeah. we want to restrict till 3 pi for the value of 3 theta. Is that clear to you? Very clear. So that is how yeah. we are going to solve it. Wow. Perfect. Yeah. The most mind-blowing thing for me was when you wrote the root three as tan pi over three. Yeah, special triangle. So special triangles is very important to remember. As soon as mm. you get square root three, square root two, or related terms, one over square root three, something like that. Right, right. Least, you have to look into your special triangles, correct? Oh, okay. And then yeah. get your answer. So okay. if I didn't sub in tan pi over three as root three, can I divide the root three by... Anything, or is that the only you, way? You will do tan inverse, right? Then you, you will say like this, let tan of beta, some acute angle, right? Equals oh, yeah, equals root, root three, three. right? So then beta equals <coughs> tan inverse, bless you. Of root three. three. Oh, yeah. And then you will get beta equals to pi by three. So we got the related acute angle. So you could find the related acute angle. Is it okay? Yes, yeah. And then other answers. Is that okay? And then your other answers. Yeah. So that is a normal strategy, but this was like root three. As soon as you see, you should check the special triangle. Yeah. I just want to get in that habit, you know, yeah. like you went straight to it. 
Okay. Yeah, let's look into the next question. Yeah, what is the next? Given that four sine square x plus cos x equals to four minus k, and now k is between zero to three, find the value of cos x in terms of k, right? So you need to find cos x, simple thing. Sine square x can be written as one, one minus, minus cos squared x. So let's do that. So we have four times one minus cos squared x. And then we have plus cos x equals to, so we'll bring all the terms to one side, right? So we'll say minus four plus k equals to zero. Does it make sense? Yeah. Bring all these terms to this side. Okay. But remember the restriction while you're solving. So let's open the bracket. We get four minus four cos square x plus cos x minus four plus k, right? Equals to zero. Now four minus four gets canceled. So you get minus four cos square x plus cos x plus k equals to zero, correct? Yeah. I prefer to write positive co leading coefficient. So I'll make yeah, everything four cos square x minus cos x minus k. Minus k. Now, this is uh, a quadratic equation. So you can apply the quadratic formula. And uh, when is it zero? You can figure this out. Is it okay now? So what yeah. is the value of x? So they're saying, what is the value of cos x? So cos x equals to minus of y. B is one plus minus b squared, which is one minus four ac. So minus minus becomes plus four times four, 16, 16 k, right? Wait. Over two times a, which is. So could we, um, is it? it I'm just asking as an other method, because when I saw that I was going to do like let cos x equals y and then you do 4y squared minus y minus oh, yeah, yeah, but because yeah. there's a k there, is that in annoying? No, no, no. You could do, I mean, see, of course, cos, you want cos x, right? You can substitute cos x as y. You could do that. Oh, okay. But I think it is. It's better to go straight to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, could yeah. do this, right? Minus <laughs> y equals to zero, right? And then apply the formula. Okay. And then replace y with, of course, you need cos x value, which is y, right? So cos x is y. No harm yeah. in this. You will write y equals same equation, minus one plus minus square root of b square, which is one, minus four ac. So four times a is four and c is minus k. Is that okay? Yeah. Minus and minus will later become and two a which will be the same answer, which we just got. Is that clear? Right. Yeah. Now remember, the value of k is between 0 and 3. So you can write this, that k is between 0 and 3. Is that clear to you? Yeah. Just right. We'll calculate later and see what it really comes to. Uh, since definitely, we know that cos x value cannot be more than plus minus 1. Is that clear to right. you? Right. Yeah. Absolute value of cos x is less than one, correct? So we'll see what the value of k could be. It, it will be almost that much, is it okay? Yeah. So uh, you can see, if I put three times 16, so three times 16 is 48, plus 40. one, 49, do you see that? Yeah. If I put three, see what happens? One plus square root of one plus 16 times three, right? Yeah. Over eight. So we get one, I, I should have one plus minus, one plus minus, I'm writing three, right? So 49 is 7. Do you see that? <coughs> so that gives me 1 plus minus 7 over 8, right? Do you see that? 1 no, plus 7 no. is 8, right? 8 over 8 yeah. is 1. Do you see that maximum value? Yeah, and, and it fits in and the... And then degree. you get minus 6 over 8. Do you understand? Minus yeah. 6 over 8. Uh, which is again negative, but less than one, what I'm trying to say is, right? Minus 0 0.75. Less than one. So it is within the domain. So that is why they have given you this domain. Do you understand? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. If they would not have given this domain, you could derive at it. So the, the beauty is, oh. what could be the value of, what could be the value of k? That could be a very brilliant question. So oh. the question which I could have asked here is, Find what is domain of k, right? So I will not give the domain of k between 0 to 1. Let us yeah. say I can say k is a positive real number 
find the domain of k so maximum value could only be 3 do you understand yeah because the maximum value of cos x could only be 1 right yeah plus and minus 1 so if you but put would, one but for yourself to figure that out you have to do trial and error or no, is there no no no, no. Oh. you know the maximum value is 1 so you'll put this value oh. equal to 1 and solve for it correct so 8 times 1 minus 1 is 7 so you will square 7 you get 49 1 plus oh. 16k is 49. So Just working backwards. Divide by 16, yes. And then get the value of k as 3. Oh. Oh, my yeah. God. Yeah. That's a good question. So yeah. this could have been a very great question. Not giving the value of k, but asking mm. it as a part, let's say. Let's say. C or D. Yeah, wherever. What, yeah. I mean, what could be the. Find the cos x value in terms of k. And then B is what could be the domain of k is that clear to yeah you? okay great now b can you please read the question b i think we have answered that part when wait so is that the answer sir the one plus one plus 16 over k yeah yeah we don't need to when, simplify anything do we so b is when k equals to three find the value <coughs> of x in this domain right so that means we are looking for a value of uh, cos x equals to one or minus three by four is that okay yes yeah. yes so let me. Uh, so what you need to find is, you can you do that part? Uh, let me. You, did you understand all this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very clear. That's, this is all part A, and the answer to part A is the one plus or minus square root one plus sixteen k of eight. So all clear. So we got this answer for one is cos x equals to one plus minus square root of one plus one plus sixteen k over eight. Is it okay? Yes. Now, so we got this. Second part is when k equals to 3, find the value of x in this range up to 360, right? So when you substitute 3, we get cos x equals to 1 plus minus. We did this part. You did. <laughs> yeah, without. You, you already reading, did it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Over 8, and we solved this, we got 1 and minus 3 by 4. Is that okay? Yes. Now, since we want to answer this particular part that we are looking into two solutions, one or minus three by four. Three and four. Apply the cast rule, right? So let's do one by one. Cos x one is very clear to you. Cos x is one between when it is, it starts with one itself, right? Zero is one. Yeah. So if you draw the cosine graph, you know the cosine graph is kind of like this. So That's one awesome. gives you two solutions, which is zero degrees and 360 degrees. Is that clear to you? Yeah. And now with minus three by four, we know we are in quadrant two and three, right? Yeah. So two and three. So we'll do cos inverse of beta. I mean, three by four. Let me do three by four. We'll find beta, right? Beta acute angle. Let me. Uh, oh, so three over four. Yeah, yeah. I want to write three over four. So what we are, I'm trying to do here is we'll find, let this be acute angle beta. So I'm saying cos of beta is equals to three by four. So beta is equals to the acute angle, the related acute angle, cos Which is inverse of three by four. Can you tell me, calculate 41.4 degrees. 41.4 degrees. And now we are looking for two solutions. One is in quadrant two and the other one quadrant three, right? So we yeah. have... 180 plus minus 41.4 degrees. Is that clear to you? Yeah. So 180 minus that, we get um, 138.6. Wait, should I round it to? No, they're not degree. specifying. Okay. It's 59. So six is okay. Six is okay. okay. Mm. Six. And then if I add 180 to that value, 41 plus 180, right? Um, 221.4. So we have four answers. 0, 360, 138.6, 221.4, all in the domain. Zero but we, ca we can't have 360, though, because it's a... Uh, oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Very good. I didn't notice that. It's too small for me. It's subtle, yeah. <laughs> no, you're, but still, yeah. the other ones... They very important. Me. This is not a part. 0, x is greater than equal to 0, but less than 3. You're right. Oh, okay. So that will not be included. Clear. Mm -hmm. So it's easy to get carried away, isn't it? Because like the domains, they're really um, sneaky with the signs. 
So I, yeah, I've been called out so many times for that. So I'm going to make sure <laughs> that's not going to happen anymore. Good so, job. Okay. Very good. All right. Now, that one's very clear. So clear. thank you. <clears throat> Next question, please. A bit of trick. Oh, this looks like a different okay. dish. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Question nine. So a solid glass cylinder, which is used in an expensive laser amplifier, has a volume of 75 pi centimeter cubed. The cost of polishing the surface area of this glass cylinder is two pound per centimeter squared for the curved surface area and three pound per centimeter squared for the circular top and base areas. Given that the radius of the cylinders are centimeters, Part A, show that the cost of the polishing, which is C pounds, is given by C equals C, a C equals six pi R squared plus 300 pi over R. Yeah. Wow, that's wordy. <laughs> but I like your uh, test papers because they actually give you the formula and you have to just derive the formula, right? That's true. In, in yeah. our times, we were never given the formula and straight we were to do part B or something oh, related. You get the idea. That's in so that hard. Case, in that case, if you get the wrong formula, you don't know where to go, right? I yeah. Mean, you don't even know true. how to start, right? Please read uh, part B also and C also. Okay. Mm. So part B, use calculus to find the minimum cost of the polishing, giving your answer to the nearest pound. Correct. And part C, justify that answer that you have obtained in part B um, is, a is a minimum. Right. So now, my suggestion. We already have the formula, correct? Yeah. Say you get stuck here and you're not able to do part A. Right. Say you get stuck and you are not able to part B. You will not get four marks, correct? Okay. But you know the formula, so you can do part B and C. <laughs> yeah, which is six marks. <laughs> so oh, is six marks. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You understand? Yeah. In my test paper, I will not be given this part. And I'll yeah. be asked part B and C. So I, I lose all the marks, 11. Oh. Do you see, nine, 10 marks so they, I lose. They've got nicer, the examiners. <laughs> Is that what you're trying to say? Yes. Oh my God, that's really hard in your time. I Very can't imagine. Hard. They will yeah. not give me that formula, right? They say, you don't even remember the formula for a cylinder. Yeah. What are you doing here? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's so true. Oh my God. So this is, in your case, if you get stuck with part A, you can still do B and C and get right. more, than, more than half marks. Half yeah, yeah. Million. So don't just reject them just because you can't do A. Yeah. Yes. So let's do it, right? So it should not be very difficult. So we have the formula, or rather the answer, right? So only thing is we have to find the area of the cylinder. We are given that the radius is R. So area is what? Pi R square is that okay. area. And we have got top and bottom, two times pi so R square. Two is the top area, right? So, yes. So, cost of polishing the surface area of this glass cylinder is dollar two per centimeter square for the curved surface area and dollar three. So, you multiply this by dollar three. Is that okay? <laughs> pound three. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, right, sir. I know you're used to dollars. Okay. So, <laughs> pound three per cubic square. Perfect. Yeah. So that is the surface area for top and bottom, plus now, what is the curved <coughs> surface? 2 pi r and, height. Yeah, and height, correct? So how long it is? Um, the solid glass surface, which is used It tells us the volume, so can volume. we work backwards? So yeah, it is L, or height, H, right? L, so, H, yeah, so yeah. many terms. So we will have to do two parts, correct? So okay. anyway, let me write down here, 2 pi r, 2 pi r, into length and we're going to multiply this by two dollars again two pounds <laughs> <laughs> yeah no worries okay okay great well we are given the volume so volume will let us help uh, find one relation in terms of the other volume is pi r square l right so pi yeah. r square l is equals to 75 pi clear yeah so pi pi cancel and now you know that L basically is equals to 75 over R squared. So we got everything in terms of R as a function of R. Oh, yeah. So we'll write this and we say now the cost is equals to 
multiply by three, we get six pi r square plus we have two pi r instead of L, I'm writing 75 over r square and then multiply. Oh. Right. Is that clear to you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Six You're substituting. R square, correct. And uh, we can now simplify uh, canceling Excuse these me. r's here. 75 times 4 gives me 300, right? Um, and then r in the denominator. We cancel the r's. Wait, 75 times 2 is 150? Times this 2 also? Then times the 2, yeah. 300 over R. Oh, oh, that wasn't that bad for 4 marks. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So now we have the formula right here? Yeah. Okay, so <clears throat> now use calculus to find the minimum. So what is the concept here? Calculus is derivative, and derivative should be minimum when we have 0 rate of change at that particular point, right? So let's find the derivative. So C prime or derivative of C, you can also write DC over DR, is that okay? Differentiate the equation with respect to R, okay? Yeah, yeah. When you do that, you get six pi times two. So two times six, I should write six pi R, is that okay? Derivative, two times six is 12, 12 I, I could have written directly. And this is minus r to the power of minus 2. So minus 300 um, pi over oh yeah. r squared. Is that clear to you? Well, you will rewrite this as, I know what you're going to do. You will rewrite <laughs> six, 6 pi r <laughs> to the minus. Plus, yes, yes. <laughs> I don't like that look. It's a bit... Um... R minus 1, right? <laughs> yeah, that's what I like to see. <laughs> and you. then you will say that C prime or DCDR is 12 pi R. And this gives you minus. Is this clear now? 300. Minus 300. R to the power of minus 2. I'm minus not two. going there, but I'll write R squared. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's okay. Perfect. Yeah. Now, yeah. Use calculus to find the minimum cost of polishing, giving your answer to the nearest this. So, minimum or maximum, you have to find the critical number, right? Right. So we have to make that equal to zero. zero. So when yeah. you make equal to zero, so we say C prime is equal to zero, right? That means 12 pi R is Nine. equal to 300 pi over R squared. Is it okay? Oh, yeah. Only then they will be zero, right? So cross multiply, so get R cube equals to 300 over 12, right? Correct? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and now you could divide by, you could, you could simplify and then use calculator. I'll say use calculator, right? Do the cube root oh. of 300. Don't, don't bother about exact answers, right? Just find cube root. Okay, yeah. So <sighs> let me just do that. Nearest pound. Use calculus. <laughs> First, you have to find R value. Yes, what do you get? Uh, 2.92. Okay, substitute. Now, it says, so <coughs> at this particular radius value, you get the critical number, right? Now, you should actually show that this actually is minimum. Is that clear to you? Yeah. This actually is minimum. How will you show that? You the second derivative. You could do second derivative, yes, of course. Oh. But you could check the value on left and right side of this. You get the idea? Oh, yeah, yeah. On the derivative. Is that when you do the concavity and you be yeah, like yeah, you, decreasing? No, so, so just check the value of this derivative at r equals to 2 point, you get 9.2, right? So let's say 2.9. Yeah. And also the value three. at 3, right? So that means if it is a minimum at this point, it will be like minus, right? So it will be decreasing, and at that value, it will be increasing. increasing. So it oh, goes from that. decreasing to increasing. That means this critical number is a minimum. minimum. You get the yeah. idea. So you can do interval and figure this out. Is that okay? I see. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yes. You can, of course, do the second derivative. And if second derivative, because it is concave up, it has to be positive. 
So if the okay. second derivative is positive, which is positive, by the way, and second derivative is simpler, because if I do second derivative, this term is 12 pi. Is that clear? Yes. Uh, and this term is positive. Do you see? Minus, uh, minus 2 uh, will give you yeah, positive minus two times. 2 times this is 600, right? 600 divide pi divided by R. Q. Q. Okay. So both are positive terms. And therefore, uh, you can say when C second derivative is greater than 0, that means we have a minimum. Is that clear? Yes. So both methods, in this case, actually, second derivative is easier and faster. Yeah, but it's good to like, you know, double check with your method because yours is like really precise with the intervals. Because you can't really go wrong with that. Yeah. No, like if I have time, I can go back and look could, at that. Yeah. 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 So, so you have to show this one. The idea here is you have to show your work. Do not just oh, assume yes. that that critical number is a minimum. Is it okay? Right, right. Now we are sure about it. So now you substitute R. So find the value of the cost. You need to find the value of the cost, right? For yes. 2.92 and substitute 2.92 and calculate your <laughs> Oh yeah, we only calculated R this whole time. We didn't even find the costs. Oh yeah. So when you read the question, highlight what you really want to find. Otherwise, hmm. you get lost in it, right? Yeah, find I got lost in it. Yes. Oh yeah, minimum cost. Oh, that was a key point. Yes. Oh God. Okay. So yeah, see of But they are five. saying justify, justify that the answer you have obtained in part B is minimum. We did justify by taking yeah. the second derivative, right? Right. In my test paper, they will not write that statement. And if you, you don't have to... do it, they will detect one mark. Really? Yes. You have oh. to justify. But in your case, see, they, they tell you a hint. They are saying part C is justify your minimum. Do you get the idea? Yeah. So I just did it, right? I never yeah. looked for part C because we are used to, you know, you have to give a complete solution. You just can't oh. give a partial solution, right? So yeah. this is very important to understand. Is that okay? Yeah. No, that's why I've noticed, sir. Like whenever I give you exam questions, you just read the question and then you just like, uh, like you don't even read, you read the context and then you don't even yeah. read the question. And then you somehow answer every question Everything. that's on the page sure. or yeah, or more. He just answered everything. I'm like, whoa. Yeah. So yeah, I guess you're used to doing that. To be very frank with you, when I see your test paper, I say, why? Why they are asking part A, part B, part C? Yeah. Ask, man, ask. Just ask the one. <laughs> no, sir, don't make it harder. <laughs> they're making it simpler. I mean, they're yeah, guiding yeah. you to answer. They're actually guiding you. They're helping. I know. They're providing hint at every step. And the best part is, if you don't know step one, you can still do yeah. two three. Follow through. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, I don't want to really do badly then, because you're saying like you you got help, you know, you got a guide, so yes. it shouldn't be that hard, you know. But it yeah, be. it shouldn't be. See, okay. they give you very strong clues. First, they have directly given you the the formula, <laughs> and did you do that? Or you're going to lose one mark. They're asking you mm. that. Yeah, basically. <laughs> you have to justify. In any question in calculus for maximum minimum, you have to justify. Is it right? Right. Perfect. Yeah. No, because I've actually seen questions where it's been a six marker. Um, see that five plus one is six marks. Yeah. Yes, yes. But they wouldn't have this part C. So, Correct. like Correct. you said, you would just have to do it automatically. But in yes. this case, they broke it down literally for the one mark telling you. So yes. that was nice. Yeah. Okay. So All right. Let's move on. Is this clear? Absolutely clear to you? Yeah, very clear. Great. So let's share the next question now. Oh, graphs. Okay. Yeah. This is a nice variation. <laughs> so far, I'm liking all the topics that came up. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think when we hit vectors, that's when I'm going to leave. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. What okay. is the question here? Yeah, so read Figure the three mm. shows a sketch of um, part of the curve C with the equation y equals x multiplied by x plus four times x minus two. The curve C crosses the x axis at the origin O and the points A and B. Sorry. Write down the x coordinates of points A and B. Yeah, we oh. wrote it, right? Minus four, yeah. zero and two. Correct. Right. Now. <laughs> Next one. <laughs> uh, um, the finite region shown shaded in figure three is bounded by the curve C and the X axis. Use integration to find the total area of the finite region shown in the shaded 
Good. Region. Yeah. I think that's just simple steps. Yeah. Thank using you. integration. Yeah. So you but, can absolute value, right? Because area is always positive, right? Right. And also you have to do like, so find the area between minus four and zero and then zero and two. Like don't just do minus four to two because yes, that yes. will get the wrong answer. Yes. No, because I remember a couple of my friends doing yes. that. Yes, yeah. yes. So minus four to zero and the function f of x, let me write like this, right? And then you have to use the absolute value. So when you say um, the the finite region show this is this bounded by the curve, right? Write down the omitted oh, this part. Now B part B is use integration to find total area. So when you add, you have to do absolute value from zero to two, right? Of your function. Is that clear to you? Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Right. Absolute and value. To so integrate, should I expand that all out? No, yeah, yeah. You have to expand that all out. So so your function y is equal to. Just expand it, right? So first yeah. you multiply as you wish, and you do that x squared, x squared. minus x, and then you get four x minus eight, correct? Yeah. And then you have x times x squared plus plus two x minus eight, and then you have x cubed plus three x squared minus eight x, right? So that is your function. I'm writing f of x as I've written here. That becomes your function, correct? And you right. know the rules, right? Power rule. I mean, you have to use to get your answer. Is that clear to you? Yes. Very. Very simple. <laughs> okay. So you can move on to the next question. Yes. Can you please read okay. this? Yeah. So the circle C has radius five. Mm -hmm. um, and touches the y-axis at the point zero 09, as shown in figure four. Part A, write down an equation for the circle C that is shown in the figure four. Sorry? So, that's so we got the radius mm -hmm. and we got the y-axis. The center, zero and nine, right? So minus five and nine will be your center, correct? The circle of radius five, so, this is, so that means this point here is five, right? So, you have, let's call this as the circle C means the center point is C, right? So the center point is given to us as minus five, nine. Is that clear to you? Radius is given to us five. Is it correct? Wait, so um, when you said the point is nine, is that just by looking at the diagram? Yeah, it's changed it at nine, right? Okay. They're good. written here. They're written here. It touches the y axis at zero, nine, correct? So it's tangent. Oh, yeah, yeah. And if it's a tangent, when you do the, like the radius from it, it'll go through the center. Yeah. So very simple, right? So you got x plus 5, because minus minus becomes 0, right? Plus y squared, right? Because yeah. y moves 9 units up, right? So y minus 9 whole square equals to 5 squared. 25, yeah. Equation, right? So write down the equation. But you expand and write it in standard form if required, but that is also okay, I think. Oh, all right, okay. Because they haven't specified, it doesn't matter, does it? It doesn't matter. Yeah, you could write it like this. Also. But I think oh. in, your, in your case, they always expect in standard form. Oh, okay. This is actually three marks. So that's why I'm thinking, right? We may be thinking what is uh, the center and what is the radius. Two things is that, and then writing the equation. So I think three marks is justified. So we have the equation and the, the two points, correct. Yes, can you please read um, the next part? Yes, so a line through the point P, which is eight minus seven, is a tangent to the circle C at the point T. Um, part B, find the length of PT. Okay, so eight minus seven. So eight minus seven will be somewhere here, right? It is tangent to the circle at, uh, at point T, right? So. So let's just uh, draw a tangent here. Could and either go like that or like that. So eight minus seven means it has to go in this quadrant, correct? So I'll just draw a tangent here, correct? Do you see that tangent? Let us, this point is eight minus seven. Is it okay? X value positive, it has to be in quadrant three, correct? But can't it be on this side? Why? Because eight is positive X, right? So it, the, it, and minus seven is 
You are in quadrant. No, I mean like, <clears throat> like you know where that line is. Just move it down so it touches the other side. But it's still the the light. The point is still on the the same place. Yeah, we don't know where this point is, so we'll just say let this point be T. Is it okay? Oh, so we'll it doesn't matter. It. We'll we'll okay. find this point. Correct. Now it says find the length of P to T. So this is P. We need to find this particular length. Basically, yeah. we have to find the point of tangency, right? We have to find the point of tangency. Point of tangency. Yeah. Let's call this point as A B. Is it okay? Let's call yeah. this point as A B. No problem. Sorry. Yeah, no problem. You know the center, and you you know the equation of this particular line. So what you could do here is that there are a couple of ways because you know calculus also. So you can find derivative of this particular. So you know the slope of tangent uh, at any point, correct? And you yeah. take this A and B, and this point you can actually find the slope and equate the two. Is it okay? Yeah. That is one way of doing it. The other way of doing it is, since these two points are at right angles, correct? And you know this is A and B, right? A and B. And you know this equation of circle, correct? So we have this point as zero, uh, sorry, minus five and nine center. Nine. So the slope CT, so you will find slope CT, should be equal to negative reciprocal of the slope PT. Is it okay? Yeah. So this slope itself will give you the value of A and B because we can write A in terms of B. We can write A in terms oh. of x. Is that okay? Okay. So let me, so we could do that way also. I mean, that's a lengthier way. You could do that. that yeah. Way. Uh, of course, what is B equals to? What is Y equals to? Let me just rewrite here in terms of Y, what the equation is, right? So we'll say, let me use another ink here. And to show you the work, we have Y minus Y minus nine whole square is equal to, we'll take it to the other side. So we say minus X plus five whole square plus 25. Is that clear? Wait, so how, how come so we're rearranging it? We want to write y in terms of x. Oh, okay. So is this the lengthier method you were talking about, or the? Yeah, lengthier method. But but oh, basically, it is good idea to write any point on the circle if the value yeah. is a. If the value is a for x, then what is yeah. y? You have to find that value, right? I see. Yeah, yeah. Because if you find one, you can find the other. Yes. Yeah, I get you. It, it okay. will be required. So basically, it will be required. Is that okay? Yeah, I don't think I've done this method before. That's why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so it is actually a good. You, you, you have to find this, right? So y minus we'll square root this, right? So y yeah. minus nine is equal to square root with a plus minus because this could go through this also as you were saying. You understand? Oh. Uh, From an so external point, plus, plus yeah. minus. See, you you see, getting the idea, right? Plus minus. Uh, you can write 25 minus x plus 5 whole square. Is it? Does it make sense? Yeah, yeah. And so it is very clear. logical. It is, yeah. So we know what y is, right? So we know y is equal to 9 plus, plus minus nine. Yeah. 25 minus x plus 5 whole square. Perfect. So b is this. b is this. So a and b relation now you understand. Is it okay? Yeah. Right. So as far as the slope is concerned, slope will be B minus the B value is nine for this point. This point is C, right? Minus yeah. five, nine, correct? So let me just do that step. Uh, so nine minus, uh, let me write B minus nine. I want to keep, uh, doesn't matter. Let me do now nine. So why this will do nine minus B. Oh, no, no, I'll do B minus nine. B minus nine divided by a minus five. So a plus five. A minus, a plus five, yeah. And this is equal to negative and reciprocal of this slope, which is minus seven. So I'll write y value on the top, uh, uh, on the denominator, which is reciprocal, right? So negative yeah. minus seven minus p. And in the numerator, I'll write eight minus a, is it okay? Oh, 
yeah, yeah. Sorry, just had to process it for a second. I was wondering where you got those values from, but it, it says a line through the point eight minus seven. <clears throat> so, in this particular case, this method without calculus is actually a very tedious method. Oh, okay. A lot of calculation to be done to find this value. And definitely, when you do this, this is like finding tangent from the external point. Is it okay? On yeah. Circle. Is it okay? On yeah, yeah. That is what you're trying to do. Okay? Now, if you do it using calculus, in that case, just find the derivatives, correct? So derivative of this is two times x plus y. We will differentiate with respect to x, correct? Yeah. So let me just write in short, and I like you to do this exercise. Two times, two times x plus y, plus what is the derivative of this? Plus two times y minus nine, but dy dx, is it okay? Yeah. Equals to zero. So from here, we get dy dx slope. Yeah, yeah. The that dy dx is what we're trying to match with this equation and getting our answer. Okay? Right. So it is slightly lengthy. I'm still wondering why it is only three marks. Yeah. So write down the equation of the circle that shows this, this figure. A line through 8 <coughs> minus 7 I was just thinking. is into the circle at point T. Find the length PT. Where is T? They are not given T. We have to find T, right? Just be clear about it. Yeah. No. So why is it only three marks? Is Here's it because, um, you know, the distance is anything to do with the distance formula? But you need two coordinate points for that. First you need the coordinate points, then the Yeah. Distance. So how do you find the coordinate points without using... This is all. This is all. It is very lengthy. Okay. Do one thing. Uh, you go Could to I my... YouTube. solve it? Yeah. No, oh, three. external point. Is it okay? Yeah. Derivatives, derivative. It is a derivative application. Tangent, external point. Okay, let's see. So, like this, you, do you see this example here? 15 minutes? Mm -hmm. so, the P point. Yeah, so, so this is a kind of question, right? Find the equation of both the lines. In that case, also, there are two lines. Do you get the idea? Yeah. That pass through the point this and are tangent to a parabola. So we have a parabola. That is also a circle. Right, right. right. So, so it passes through like it was given 8 and minus 7 and is tangent to a curve. We, let's say that. Okay? Yeah, yeah. So important thing here is that the given point is not on the parabola. It is somewhere outside. You get the idea. So when oh. you the solution, you will understand that I'm trying to find the tangent in two different ways. One is using the slope, uh, that is the calculus part. And second is y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. Do you see that? Yeah. So this part is the slope uh, which you find normally for any line, y2 minus y1, gradient, I should say, y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. And that's yeah. the derivative part. The next part is the derivative part. So y prime is 2 minus 2x, correct? Yeah, or because you differentiate. Yeah. So y prime at, we don't know the point. So let the point be a and b. So we'll put a here. And b, of course, is very simple because the equation is 2x minus x squared. b is 2b minus b yeah. squared. So that is why you have to write y in terms of x. Oh, so it's all in the same, yeah, same subject. I get it. And okay. then you figure it out. It takes time. And this question should have been worth much more. Do you get the idea? Yeah. Hmm. So, so um, yeah. I'm going to watch your video and then I'll solve it. And then let yes. me see if I get the same answer. Yes. So watch okay. the video. That should be better for you. Yeah. So now I think, uh, <laughs> can you review what we learned today? Yeah. We can end the class here today. Yes, definitely. Okay. Um, so yeah, we kind of did a lot like, um, it's hard because I, I, I haven't done any like prep before this like lesson, but it's surprising to me because I actually, I didn't forget that much. And it's just over the like time of like last year as well, because I've been with you so like quite a lot now. 
um it is like all just now sticking in and it's good now because i don't want to it's hard it's hard to just keep reviewing every topic because like things get in the way other subjects and stuff it's, it should stick there so i feel like it is now because um we were kind of thrown with a lot of questions so i just wrote the topics down just so i can talk back so we did a bit of logarithms and expo um not exponentials just the logs and um, the natural logs the key thing I learned from there, it was just about when we found our value, the subbing it back into the equation is just so important because um, we want to check if our answer is right. And if you have the calculator available at any point throughout and you just want to check, always check with the calculator because you can't go wrong there. Um, and then for um, the special triangles question. So whenever I see, like like you said, so root three and things, just immediately draw up the special triangles just to be safe. Um, and then a critical step was, uh, all this I've noticed. So if we did a trick question and you like subbed in a value. So we said tan pi over three was root three. You just subbed it in. Um, even in another question, we were doing something and then we found the value. So let's say, oh, it was the surface area, the cylinder one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we found um, the length. Um, no, the height of it as like in terms of R and you just subbed it in. So I can see that's like a regular thing that it's like coming up as a technique to do. And it's so much better because what I always used to do was like find a value, but not in terms of like the, what the question was asked. Variable. Yeah, variables. Derive the gave... formula. Derive the yeah. formula, write the expression, right? And at oh, the yeah. end, substitute the values to find the answer. You get the yeah. idea. Yeah. You get marks for every stage. Uh, now, what I've seen here is sometimes when you derive the formula correctly yeah. and substitute and get the wrong answer because of wrong calculations, teachers won't deduct your marks. Mm, because they can see your yeah, work through just a mistake. Yeah, it is oh, a, okay. it happens. They don't deduct the marks. Right, right. So yeah, that's really important then. So yeah, working with variables and you want to keep your variables really to the minimum. If you can write something in terms of something else, like we just discussed with the circle, if you yeah. can write A in terms of B and then work yeah. it out like that, do that. Don't have A, B, C, D, because then afterwards you just get so many equations with too many variables and you can't cancel them out. So that's yeah. also another important thing. And then um, just a simple integration differentiation and all these little rules that you just keep in mind. So yeah, it was a really good review of like kind of it everything. Was, it was. I mean, you selected the right kind of questions at random. It happened. Yeah, I didn't know. <laughs> we had exponential logarithmic functions. Right. We had uh, trigonometry, and we had uh, calculus, which involved differentiation as well as integration. Right. So and some graphs. Question based on minimum. So everything was covered. That was beautiful. Yeah. So I love that spread which you covered in this. It's Great. good variety, yeah, because it's just going to be like the exam, you know, because I have done, because when I do exam questions only for a topic, I get them all right. But then obviously when I, that's because I'm in the mindset. When your mindset's like everywhere, it it does play a trick on you. So it's good to get back into that like routine, I guess. It is, it is. So thank you so much, sir, for your My help. Pleasure. That was like super helpful. My pleasure. Thank you. I have a good day. Thank you, sir. Bye. Have a good rest of your day. You too. Thank you.